You're listening to the number one fitness, health, and entertainment podcast. This is Mind Pump. Now, in today's episode, we talk about fat loss. I know right now, beginning of the year, everybody is interested in probably improving their body composition. The average person gains body fat uh, over the holiday season, and gyms tend to get packed uh, in January because everybody wants to reverse that trend. So here's what we did in today's episode. We talked about five super effective steps that you can do that we've noticed in our clients. Remember, we all trained people for over two decades. So these are the most effective steps we've ever seen that help people lose fat, keep it off, and none of it has to do with dieting. So you're not going to follow a strict diet. Uh, you're not going to try and hit calorie targets or anything like that. Just follow these five steps and you're likely to see some serious fat loss, okay? And they start out with hitting protein targets. We talk about cutting down on bad habits. That's a personal one. We talk about tracking not to hit targets, but rather because it helps make you more mindful. We talk about walking after every meal and then aiming for drinking a half a gallon to a gallon of water. But listen to the episode. We break it all down and explain it and give you strategies. Um, now, this episode is brought to you by one of our favorite sponsors, Viore. Viore makes some of the best athleisure wear clothing anywhere. This stuff is super comfortable. It has a lifetime guarantee, um, and it's exploding. Viore is blowing up. Everybody's getting Viore clothes, uh, again, because the quality and the style are so amazing. Again, they have that lifetime guarantee. And because you listen to Mind Pump, you get the biggest discount available around 25% off. Here's what you do. Go to vioriclothing.com. That's V-U-O-R-I Clothing. Dot com forward slash mind pump. Use the code mind pump to get that 25% off. Also, uh, we've extended our December promotion for an entire week. Here's what the promotion is we have three workout bundles for three different types of people. Each bundle has different exercise programs, and when you combine them all, it gives you about nine plus months of detailed exercise workout programming. That means you know what your workouts look like every day, you know how many sets you need to do, reps, what exercises, and there's video demos. So we teach you how to do every single movement that we ask you to do. Here's the three different types of bundles. The first one is for beginners. It's called the new to weightlifting bundle. The second one is for intermediate people. This one's the body transformation bundle. And the third one is for those of you that have been working out for a long time and want to take it to the next level. It's an advanced bundle. It's the New Year Extreme Intensity Bundle. Now, all three of these bundles come with a 30-day money-back guarantee, and they also include a year of free access into our private forum. This way, you can have people help you along the way. You can ask questions. You can post videos of your exercises so people can critique your form. You can talk to Adam, Justin, and myself. We're in there as well. You get a full free access, uh, year of access for free if you enroll in any one of those three bundles. Now, if you want to learn more, if you just want to sign up, Here's where you go. Go to mapsdecember.com. That's the word maps, M-A-P-S, December.com. All right, guys. I think uh, since we're all on the same page right now, you know, we've been working out together and all of us are kind of motivated yeah. to do this. Um, let's. I think we should talk about how we like to burn body fat for ourselves. Without dieting. Well, I mean, without dieting, exactly. I mean, I, I usually don't follow a, a structured diet. I know you guys similarly, unless you were competing, same thing for mm -hmm. you. Yeah. So we should talk about the strategies that we take uh, and use for ourselves that we find the most success. Uh, I like with. this idea because as soon as I start to kick up on the sh sharing our training together and talking more about us motivating it. yeah well people then start dming me wanting to know exactly what it's funny like i know that there's a lot of memes made around this and there's a lot of jokes uh outside of the fitness community made about the fitness community about you know sharing food and meal yeah. but i tell you to this day nothing drives more viewers on my stories than sharing what i'm eating i know it weird? is the funniest thing ever i know but i just i, I also think that that people are curious i yeah. mean there's a lot obviously most people that are following us are interested in health and fitness and training and building muscle and dieting and so you just want to know you know we could sit here and uh, write ebooks all day long or talk on a podcast but then they want to see what you're actually doing yeah i have a question yeah. for you guys because uh for me this happened for me i want to see if this happened to you for you guys as well um a lot because obviously i got into the fitness space because i was a fitness fanatic and oftentimes what fitness fanatics do for themselves is not what would work with the average for the average person because mm -hmm. obviously you're a fanatic about fitness so much so that you made it your career so, but as I continued to train clients, I actually started to learn more from them. Uh, I, I learned from them as well. And so what I mean by that is 
A lot of the things that I do now are behavior based. When I first got into fitness, I was such a fanatic. It was formulaic. It was mm -hmm. like, do this, eat this many calories, follow this meal plan. Uh, but as I started training clients, obviously I would try that, uh, doing that for them. Didn't work for them. What worked for clients was behavior based. When I started applying that on myself, it also worked better because it was easier and it was much more easier to sustain. And I, I wasn't such a maniac. I feel like that's kind of the natural progression for almost any good trainer. Yeah. Right. I think we you go through the schooling, whether you went through the a, a formal traditional four year degree or you have you've acquired a bunch of national certifications and they teach you all the X's and O's. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, they teach you how to how to handle somebody who's trying to build muscle, lose body fat, sports performance, um, and mechanics. You get in so it's a lot of the technical stuff. Mm -hmm. Uh so you have the answers to the test, but what we what you find after you've trained you know hundreds and then eventually maybe even thousands of people you start to realize oh shit like even though all these x's and o's uh are important to know uh the things that really move the needle for most people are creating good behaviors yeah it's so funny thinking back when i used to train clients like when i was first getting started and would just look at food as like numbers and they have these type of macros in them and so be because it was like so popular back then to really have a meal plan attached to your training services, um, you know, that's something I really tried to dive into and figure out. And it was just, it was so frustrating because I would come back and they're like, well, I didn't like that. I didn't like to give any other options. It was always, do you have any other options to swap these out and do this and do that and do the other? And really like uh, later on in my career, I'm like, okay, so I have to explain this in a way where it's relatable and it's something that they're already actually doing but now we're just tweaking little things. Right. So here's, I'm going to paint the context. Okay. Um, when we say these are the things that work, here's what we mean by that. They work in the sense that they get you leaner, duh. So they should get you leaner, but they also work in the, in the sense that they're sustainable. These are things that tend to, they last a long time. It's not short lived uh, results. It's sustainable because it works on the body in a long term way, but also sustainable because psychologically speaking, it's sustainable. And then third, these things that we're going, to, we're going to talk about preserve muscle, preserve the metabolism, they're healthy approaches. So those are the three things that will paint the context kind of of what works. Well, that's the problem with the the X's and O's approach is it, it creates a on and off the wagon. Exactly. Yeah. So, I mean, it, and, and I also want to be clear about this, right? So there's levels to this. Um, so right now I am not uh, following a meal plan or tracking my food and, and do, weighing and measuring and doing so that, but- if I want to see 3% body fat and get in the, the best shape of my life, I would have progressed to that. But when I'm talking about getting in good shape, like really good shape, like better than yeah. what most people yeah, would- Yeah, not unhealthy lean. Yeah, Just yeah. Just lean. Just lean. Like yes. lean, very fit, in good, in good shape. Um, I don't need to do all that stuff to get there. Just by All I need to do is change some habits or behaviors in my own life, what I'm currently doing mm -hmm. right now, to start heading in that direction. And right. I can always, if I want to ramp it up to like this really structured diet, but even that it's just, it's not long-term for me and it's not sustainable and I'm a fitness fanatic. So that's why, it, and it took a while for me to piece that together. If I have the on and off the wagon attitude by following the X's and O's and, and you follow, work in fitness. Yeah. yeah and, and I love it and I'm into it. Imagine what that's like for somebody who hates it or it's a struggle to get to the gym or it's a it struggle fails. to say, yeah, that's why it always fails. Always. All right. So the first thing that I do um, is I, I just aim to hit my protein targets. Yeah. Now, here's why this works so well. Okay. First off, uh, let's talk physiologically. Eating a high protein diet does preserve muscle. It does help with the muscle building process. Indirectly, it speeds up the metabolism, which helps with fat loss. But here's what it does psychologically. We know this now for a fact, uh, and I've experienced this time and time again, not just myself, but through with clients, but also uh, the studies support this. When you hit uh, a high protein diet, when you aim for high protein, you're at, you tend to eat less. Mm -hmm. You actually tend to eat less calories overall. I know it sounds counter because you're like, oh my God, I'm increasing my protein intake. How is that going to make me eat less calories? But when you prioritize protein and you eat the amount of protein yeah. that you need to for high protein, it's very satiating. It does very blunt satiating. your appetite, and you end up eating less carbohydrates. And yeah, less especially fats and less from fruit. whole food sources. Oh yes, you know, you. And, and that's the thing. It's like 
it does seem counterintuitive to now up your protein, but really it just reprioritize, reprioritizes your focus. And that way, when you're eating that first, like it, a lot of times, like I, I'm pretty much satisfied. I, I don't, I don't really need the excess of, of carbohydrates that I would uh, otherwise. Well, I'm the same way, Sal. So this is how I start off too. And what I always recognize for me is to get that much protein, I have to, I have to make choices that uh, I normally wouldn't make. So for example, like, you know, really easily, I would I would love to swing by a Chick Fil A and have a you know, three you know chicken sandwich you know breakfast sandwiches or whatever like that. But real quick, I, I I take in a thousand calories and a bunch of that is fat and a, and it's low protein. Even though it's a chicken sandwich or it, it has you didn't hit your target, yeah, it's still yeah. low on protein and I fill up a lot of my calories or something. And then when I look at the end of the day, I go, oh crap. I still didn't hit my protein intake, so I got to get a meal that's much higher, even more high or even higher on protein than what I was doing. Having to prioritize that, it just naturally eliminates some of the other choices that I would have made. Totally. So if you're listening right now, essentially you're aiming for anywhere between, I don't know, 0 0.6, 0 0.7 grams of protein per pound of body weight, all the way up to about a gram yeah. of protein per pound of body weight. So for me, I try to do four meals of 50 grams of protein each. And because I'm prioritizing protein, that's the centerpiece of my meal. So when I start my meal, it's okay, can I get 50 grams of protein? Mm -hmm. And I need to eat that now first. I'll build around that. And I you know, exactly. And I need to eat that first. Usually what ends up happening is it really it really blunts my appetite and I just eat less of everything else. My calories. Drop. And by the way, four meals of 50 grams of protein is a lot of protein. It, is. it takes a lot of effort to go get that. So mm -hmm. and real easily you get behind. So if you decide you have like literally having uh four four scrambled eggs, a couple pieces of bacon and some toast. Is not enough protein. No, it's not. It's not 50 grams of protein. So even a meal like that, that sounds like a, a relatively high protein meal, if you ate that for your first meal and then you go into lunchtime having your second meal, you're now 20 grams behind. Now you need a 70 gram. So getting ahead of protein is is key. So one of the things that I used to give as tips to clients is whenever you make dinner, uh, whatever dinner you make. The, I always would make more with the meat, and I would use that meat, and I would add it into like a scramble. Mm. It was like well, for the next day. Yeah, because yeah. eggs are always an easy thing for morning time, right? So and that and yeah, that, but most people don't eat enough eggs. To, they don't want to eat six, seven, eight. Yeah, eggs. not a lot of people are eating. Uh, yeah, seven or eight eggs, right, to get enough protein to hit like the targets that you're talking about. So an easy way to do that is to throw like four ounces of meat in there with two or three eggs, and now I've got like this scramble that it's closer to mm -hmm. 45, 50 grams mm -hmm. of protein. Mm -hmm. Right. So that's same thing. So what I do is I'll go, you know, 50 grams for breakfast, then I'll have 50 grams for, for lunch. I'll have something before dinner and then 50 grams for dinner. And again, if I eat that first and that's the priority, I end up eating less calories and the higher protein tends to contribute to more muscle gain, which speeds up the metabolism. Now, the second thing uh, that I do, um, and this, I like this because it's, it's individual for the person, right? So we'll call it just cutting down on bad habits. You know yourself very well. So think of the bad habits that you have. For me, one of the bigger bad habits that I have that contributes to eating too many calories is eating out. So eating out, when you mm -hmm. when you eat out, the typical meal that you'll buy at a restaurant is around a thousand calories. It just plus, is thousand plus. Or more, right? Yeah. Even salads, you know, it's like you go to go to a cheesecake factory because they actually list the calories, right? Look at their salads, like fifteen hundred calories, two thousand calories for a salad. So eating out, when I don't eat out and I eat food that I cook, naturally I end up eating less. So the first thing that I do for me is I just start eating out much less. And so it's a, a bad habit that I cut down, but this is different from person to person. Yeah. And it also, to me, it also matters on how bad you abuse this, right? So like, um, I'm with you. I, mine used to be, it's not anymore. I used to be a big soda drinker. Uh, definitely eating out uh, is one of them. Um, and even just eating sweets, like, you know, it's, we're around the holiday time right now. And so there's a lot of sweets around the house. And, you know, I tend to graze or pick right now and because I'm not following anything or I'm not strict on my diet. And so I, I become aware of how much of that I'm doing. If you're somebody, and I've had clients, I know, Sal, you've talked about your client that used to drink like multiple Cokes a day and stuff like no that. No water. Just yeah. Cokes, so yeah. I don't, when I, when I say cut down on the bad habits, it doesn't look like this. It doesn't go like, oh, I drink three sodas a day and now it's a zero. Exactly. Like yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm smart enough to know that doing that cold turkey is going to be really, really tough for me to be consistent and stick to that. So I'm just realistic with what I do. I just look at, oh, okay, I was eating out, like to your point, Sal, because that's one for me. 
I'm eating out uh, four times a week right now. I'm going to cut that in half. It's going to I'm two. I'm going to allow myself to still eat out two times, but you know, four times, or even this shifting what I'm eating out. You know, like four times I'm eating out, they, they were five guys and, you know, pizza and something else. Like, okay, I'm at least going to make that shift from five guys and pizza to like Chipotle and Nick mm. the Greek. You know, I'm going to make a better choice if I, that might be my first phase. And so depending on how bad of a habit it is or how much of it you're abusing would be how I would recommend where you go from here and you slowly start to change that. And and this goes just like what we talk about with training. I'm always trying to do the least amount as possible to elicit the most amount of change when we talk about exercise. Well, the mm -hmm. same thing applies for nutrition. I'm always trying to change my nutrition with the, the least amount to elicit the most amount of change. I just want to adjust a few things. If I tighten up, increase my protein, get rid of some a little bit of the processed food or eliminate some of these treats that I was doing, just that little bit of adjustment of increasing the protein and eliminating some of the other crappier foods, my body, and I'm training, my body will start to see change. Yeah, totally. Now I know I'm going to be alone here, but uh, you know I'm the drinker of the group. And uh, so this is something that I'm very conscious of, you know, when it's, when it's been, you know, more frequent, when I've been, you know, kind of backing off, but um, you know, especially around the holidays, it's around a bit more. And so I'm just more conscious of uh, not necessarily completely eliminating it. But if I am drinking, like I'm noticing, too, that like all the, the mixed uh, sodas and, you know, stuff with like even more sugar that's uh, involved with that versus just I've, I've kind of trained myself to, to have a glass that I'm slowly sipping. And that could be just like with whiskey on the rocks or something like that, where it's just, you know, you get you get sort of the feel from it, but it's not quite as damaging in terms of calories and everything else for me uh, the next That's day. That's great advice uh, because uh, mixed drinks have a lot of calories, straight alcohol, especially if you just enjoy the taste of it. Right. Jessica used to do this, right? So you know, obviously before she got pregnant, she's breastfeeding, she's not doing this. But before that, if we did drink, that's what she would do. She would have like this much whiskey. She likes it without ice. She's just like it straight in a glas and it would last I can't her do straight 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 will get you a uh, hangover man. oh bro she drinks like a she drinks like a like just a that little bit of ice is good hydration uh, no but she yeah. likes it so she'll have a little bit of, of you know, i don't remember what her favorite brand she's going to be mad that i didn't say it but like yeah. she'll have this much and it lasts her the whole night yeah she enjoys it and it's way less calories than having a bunch of mixed drinks and that's exactly along the lines of cutting down on bad habits perfect another one that i do is i stop having the the trigger snacks in the house so like for yeah. me potato chips Potato chips for me are, it's drugs. Oh, yeah. If it's in the house, I'm going to eat it. And I'll buy it occasionally because I'll enjoy it with the, you know, with the kids or I'll have a little here and there. I just stop buying it as much. So instead of having chips all the time, I'll buy it maybe once a week. And it's I'll buy a quick calories are so fast uh, to consume. Yeah, because well, that's my bad habit. This right? is where I, I see this. I know this is in the bad habit category. That to me even falls in the protein target because this starts to happen. Like I always catch myself when I start paying attention to protein and going after it that part of the reason why I'm struggling hitting it or why I was struggling hitting it is because of things like that. Mm. Because of sitting down and having you know a couple handfuls of chips, which ends up being 500 calories and fills me up for a little while and get no protein from it or relatively no protein mm -hmm. from it. I know if I do that once or twice in a day, there's no way I'm hitting my protein intake. So just simply by targeting the protein, I, I feel like those type of things have to kind of fall off. And that's what I love about that totally. as a first step. Now, the next step sounds like dieting, but it's not. So you got to listen and give us a chance to explain. So the next step is to track your food. Now, here's what we mean by when we say track our track your food. Literally, just track it. Don't yeah. hit. Don't worry about calories. Don't worry about pro, uh, uh, fats and just carbs. Just be conscious of what you're doing. It's exactly what it is. Yeah. Studies show that when people simply track, so they simply just write down, or they have an app, now apps. I should say I should say apps because that's easier. Now, when people have apps and they actually enter in the food and they see the calories and the and the grams of everything, just becoming aware, people tend to eat less or eat more consciously and make better choices. Literally, it's not dieting. Just simply tracking. It makes a huge difference. I mean, I love this step no matter what, because even if you are somebody who's going to progress and eventually die and get really serious about this, this is still the process I take you through. You still have to start here. So yeah. So even if you're somebody who's like, I want to get ready for a stage, Adam, I want to look like this, like we still are going to go through these same phases. And the first step of or the first step before you get to even considering dieting is tracking and just becoming aware. And that's really all it is, is just you becoming aware of what you're putting. And it's funny that just people knowing that 
they make better choices. Even if you're not a dietitian, you don't know everything about proteins, fats, and carbs, just becoming aware of like, holy crap, I didn't realize that that thing I just had was mm -hmm. 700 calories or it was that much fat or that much sugar. They start to, you start to see that and becoming aware of those choices automatically starts to curb some Well, studies things. that compare mindfulness practices to diets show that the mindfulness practices actually uh, are outperform trying to hit specific targets. Really tracking is a form of a mindfulness practice. So mindfulness practices are like not being distracted, paying attention to the taste of the food, how you feel, you know, mindfully chewing every single bite. Tracking slows people down. It's, it's the yeah. same thing. It's just slowing you down. You're stop. You're not just eating mindlessly. You're stop. And if you look at, here's the deal. If you're somebody that eats mindlessly while you're watching TV or you're bored you're, you're driving. Or, or you're at a party and there's food you want to grab, yeah. if you track everything you eat, you're much more likely to stop because you're like, oh, I don't want to write well, it down. Well, I think that's or, a huge point on its yes. own is to just slow down. And, that's it. And I think that uh, we just get caught up in a lot of our, our patterns throughout the day of what we usually do and to just now kind of like slow down, be conscious of what you're doing. It's going to change your behavior is like crazy. Totally. Well, and just like back to the television point that you're making right now just simply tracking you can start to you can start to correlate things like this like oh shit without even trying right without even trying or saying you can or can't do something right so no one's saying you can't eat in front of the tv no one's saying you can't do any of those things just, just track it but because you're tracking you you know most people just becoming aware they go like oh wow look at that Every time I go to dinner and sit around on TV, I'm eating an extra 600, 700 calories at that time. Mm -hmm. Wow, I wonder if I just didn't sit in front of the TV and had my dinner, if that would make a difference. Yep. And you'd be blown well, away Well, what's by what funny does. is when I would recommend this to clients, uh, they would struggle to track the snack foods. And it wasn't because... Mm -hmm. It wasn't because it was hard to do. It's because they literally didn't want to. Yes. And I'd say, well, why don't you like want block to? block it out. I'd say, know? why don't you want to? And they'll, because then it's real. <laughs> then I actually really did it. So really, it's a mindfulness. But if you just make the rule that you track everything with no targets, no goals, nothing like that, no judgment, you just naturally start to make uh, better choices. Yep. Now, the next step is by far the most effective way I've ever gotten anybody to do cardio throughout the day. Yep. It's the most effective thing. Yeah. Rather than scheduling cardio, rather than doing a 30 minutes when you wake up or whatever, just make this rule right here that you go for a 10-minute walk after each meal. That's it. 10-minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. By the way, it's very easy to do this. Mm -hmm. 10 minutes is not is easy to find right after breakfast or lunch or dinner. It's very, very easy. And just make it 10 minutes. But obviously, if you do it for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, what you've done is you've had 30 minutes of walking cardio in your day. But there's some additional benefits to this. Uh, when you walk right after you eat, it speeds up and helps with digestion. Studies mm -hmm. prove this. It also improves insulin sensitivity. So down the road, uh, by the way, when your body's more sensitive to insulin, you're less likely for your body to want to store body fat. And of course, probably reduces your risk of getting issues later on like diabetes or insulin insensitivity problems. So what 10 minutes, that's all it is. 10 minutes after every meal, Super easy rule, and it injects just the thir just thirty yeah. minutes of cardio. And behaviorally, if you you know attach it to something like that, like where you you're always eating, you know, if they, and this is something that now is a ritual after you're done, you're a lot more likely to keep repeating the process of this. And, uh, and we've just seen this over and over again. I love this one. I mean, this is one of my favorite things. And I, and I also and we didn't touch on this, and this has nothing related to losing body fat, but I mean. Uh, the opportunity to walk with your partner. I mean, the opportunity to walk and do some activity like that and have that alone time. It's a, I don't know. I think today it just, it, it's so hard to find that with uh, all of us having our phones attached to us mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. and, and constantly getting dings from emails and social media and whatever work stuff. Um, just to, to, to completely separate from that and be right there with your partner, having a conversation, get some sunlight. Yeah. You're getting, you're, you're, you're digesting your food better. Like Sal was saying, you're also burning, you're burning calories, you're walking, you're moving. So there's benefits there too. So, uh, I've just, I had so much more success teaching clients to do things like this than I ever did to getting them to like get on an elliptical for, you know, 30 minutes every mm -hmm. single day. And that actually becoming it's, a behavior. It's also just easy to, to digest. And I don't mean the physical sense. I mean, it just the, the processing sense. Like think about 10 minutes. Yeah. You just it's finished. Simple. Yeah. You just finished eating lunch. It's 1230. I can walk till 1240. I mean, it's, it really is that easy rather than saying 30 minutes. Like if I say, go do 30 minutes of cardio, People like, oh, 30 minutes. Oh, I can all, fit that in. That's a big commitment. Yeah. 10 minutes after each meal. Well, and you know what? It, and I love that. And, I, and, and 
what it leads to though, many times you go much longer. Yeah. That's what's great about it because you're only committing to like, I just got to do 10 minutes after That's I eat. That's all I have to do. And there's going to be times when you're pressed and you only, and you don't really want to do anything, but you at least do your 10 minutes and then you're done and whatever. But then there's going to be a lot of times when you're like enjoying the walk or you're enjoying the conversation that you're having with a person that's totally. on the walk with you. And 10 minutes turns into 20 to 30 to sometimes 40 or an hour. And now you've got this great activity that you probably wouldn't have done had you not made that commitment. Yeah, And now you can multitask with this too. So if you're going to be on a phone call for work or a meeting, you could do it in the 10 minutes. You can meet with people over 10 minutes. Hey, go for a walk with me. Let's have a conversation. Or if you're learning something, Put on your your headphones or whatever your ear your, your ear pods and walk for ten minutes after each meal and listen to something that's gonna you know inform you. Now the next one is 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 also one of my favorites and again, it's really it's the way it, it influences your behaviors that makes it so effective, and that is to aim for a half to one gallon of water every day. Now, physiologically speaking, if you're more hydrated, you're less likely to eat more. You know, you, your appetite's better, so you tend to eat less. Being hydrated. Mm gets your body to work better, less inflammation, it's better for your health. Less but, joint pain. But here's really what ends up happening. When you drink a half a gallon to a gallon of water every day. You're not drinking anything else. You're not drinking anything else, <laughs> and you tend to eat less. Yeah, you and, tend, you, and you get up and pee more. Suppressive. And you get up to pee more. Yes. You, you know, it's funny. When I would have my clients aim for a gallon a day, I used to I would track them with uh, like these devices that would track their steps. You'd mm -hmm. see their steps go up. Yeah. And yeah. it's because they got up to go to the back. <laughs> yeah. And, you, you know, it, it might sound funny, yeah. but it actually makes a big difference. It does. Just that little bit of, of activity. So Literally what you do, and this is how I, I end up doing it for myself and how I would do it for my clients, I would have them either have a container that was a half a gallon to a gallon, or uh, they would go buy one. You can buy water in the gallon, and that's how they'd start their day, and they know they need to finish that by the end of the day. There's just so many benefits that, like, uh, it's weird. Like, once you really start focusing on being hydrated, like, what that does in terms of even mental clarity a lot of times, like having this brain fog a lot of times is being dehydrated. Like, there's this achiness in, in my joints, and that's being dehydrated. And, and there's just all these things that you don't really consider, but, I mean, your body is, is mostly comprised of water, and let's, you know, make sure that we're keeping it uh, fueled up. Many times people confuse hunger with that, right? So totally. I mean, dehydration sometimes will make you think that you're hungry. Then all of a sudden you drink a bunch of water and you're not hungry anymore. And I used to get a lot of shit for, because I used to uh, tell everybody a gallon. And, you know, and, and, and because of all the research around, you know, based off the size of somebody that, that that's a gallon is way more than what they need. But the, the truth is a gallon of water a day is not going to hurt anybody. So mm -hmm. even if that's more than somebody who weighs 112 pounds technically needs to be drinking. It's just a good target. It's yeah. a good, simple target. Shoot for a gallon of water a day. Keep yourself busy all day long, if <laughs> peeing all day long. All those things have its benefits. And I, and I love it as, as a, from the behavioral angle, like you said, Sal, is that even though it's uh, it has other benefits to it, just simply having a habit of drinking that, you naturally start to eliminate all the other things without telling them they can't have it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Mm -hmm. When I would have, this is this was like clockwork. This is my own experience, so this might not happen for you, but like clockwork, when I would have clients successfully hit about a gallon of water every single day, like clockwork, they would lose anywhere between four to seven pounds. Like almost everybody would lose weight just from drinking water. And it was funny because they think it was magic. Like, oh, yeah. water's making my metabolism burn more calories. I'm like, without realizing it, you're just not drinking anything else. Um, and, and also, here's the other thing, too. When you drink and you're well hydrated and you drink a, a good amount of water, you probably will hold less water, less bloat in your body. Yeah. And so you tend to lose water weight. I know it sounds counter because you're drinking more water, but this is what ends up happening. You end up holding less water in your body. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. the interesting part about this is we didn't even talk about resistance training, right? So, I mean, this whole thing is about how to lose fat. Just without, easy steps. Yeah, just if you just did this, heaven forbid you add in a resistance day training or two or three in there, oh, yeah. and that's only going to accelerate the results you get from this. But this is without following a strict meal plan. This is without telling you you can't do a bunch of things. If you just make these, if you just follow these five steps, and you're really good about it, you know, 99% of the people you're gonna are going to see some results. 100%. You will. And my experience, just clients doing this, what we just said consistently, would typically result in around 15 pounds uh, of fat loss. That's no joke, 15 pounds. And that's pretty good. We're talking about pure body fat just from doing these things that we just talked about right here. So again, a little recap, 
Step number one, hit those protein targets. Step number two, just start cutting down on your bad habits. You know which ones you have, so make them personal, individual. Step number three, just start tracking. Don't aim for anything in particular. Just pay attention, track. Use a, an app like Fat Secret uh, on your phone. Super easy to use. Step number four, do a short walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Aim for 10 minutes. That's it. Just 10-minute walk after breakfast, lunch, and dinner. Nothing in addition to that. And then step number five, aim for half a gallon to a gallon of water every single day. If you just do those things, you will see some fat loss. Look, Mind Pump is recorded on video as well as audio. Come find us on YouTube, Mind Pump Podcast. You can also find all of us on Instagram. You can find Justin at Mind Pump Justin, me at Mind Pump Sal, Adam at Mind Pump Adam, and Doug, the producer at Mind Pump Doug. Bar and I'll show you this, whatever. And I'm like, oh, I can't, I, I can't go to the bar. He's like, oh, you don't drink because of fitness? I'm like, no, I'm not old enough. He's like, no, I'll get out of here. <laughs> I showed him my license. He almost fell out of his chair. Do you know how old they thought I was? How old? 32. <laughs> I was 19 years old, bro. Yeah. I thought I was 32 years old. That's funny. Uh, it's not that funny. You're mature. Yeah, I know.